Hello out there, welcome to this tutorial on statistics. In this video, we'll be calculating skewness. We have our problem here. Calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness of the distribution in the table below. We have the distribution table here. We have the first column containing the intervals of ages and the second column representing the frequencies. In order to calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness, we bring in the formula SK is equal to mean minus mode divided by standard deviation. And we are going to start with calculating the mean, which is sigma fx over sigma f. And from the table, we don't have x. x represents the mid value of the intervals. So we create additional column for x. To get the values for x, we add the lower limit and the upper limit and then divide the sum by 2. 10 plus 19, divide the sum by 2, it gives 14.5. 20 plus 29, divide the sum by 2, it gives 24.5. 30 plus 39, divide the sum by 2, it gives 34.5. 40 plus 49, divide the sum by 2, it gives 44.5. 50 plus 59 divided sum by 2 gives 54.5 and 60 plus 69 divided sum by 2 gives 64.5 So having done that, the next thing is to find fx which is frequency times the mid value So we create another column for fx 4 times 14.5 gives 58 7 times 24.5 gives 171.5 8 times 34.5 gives 276. 10 times 44.5 gives 445. 6 times 54.5 gives 327. And 5 times 54.5 gives 322.5. From here, we find the sigma, that is the sum of fx and the sum of f. So we are adding two columns here. Column f, 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 6 plus 5 gives 40. We then go ahead to sum fx 58 plus 171.5 plus 276 plus 445 plus 327 plus 322.5 gives 1600. We then substitute into the mean formula sigma fx is 1600, then divide by sigma f which is 40 1600 divided by 40 gives 40 that represents the mean of this distribution required for calculating carl pearson's coefficient of skewness we then go ahead to calculate the mode the formula for the mode is l plus delta 1 over delta 1 plus delta 2 multiplied by c we need to identify the modal class that is the class with the highest frequency. The highest frequency here is 10, so the class is 40 to 49. From here, we'll be able to get our L, delta 1, delta 2, and C. So getting our L, L means the lower class boundary of the modal class. This is the modal class. This is the lower limit. To get the lower class boundary, we add this 39 plus 40. We then divide the sum by 2. That will give us 39.5. So we have the lower class boundary of the modal class to be 39.5. We then go ahead to find delta 1. Delta 1 is the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the class before it. Since this distribution is arranged in ascending order from the lowest class interval to the highest class interval so we have 10 minus 8 to give us delta 1 that gives 2 then for delta 2 it is the frequency of the modal class and the class after it and the frequency of the class after it is 6 so 10 minus 6 gives 4 and for c c means width the class width to get our class width, um, it means how many items do we have in this interval? 
if you count very well, we are going to have 10. Because the 40 and 49 are inclusive in the class interval. Or our upper class boundary here is as good as adding 49 to 50 and then divide the sum by 2, which is going to be 49.5. We then subtract the lower class boundary from it. Our lower class boundary is 39.5. So 49.5 minus 39.5 is automatically 10. So we've gotten all the required items for calculating the mode. So substituting, we have um, L, which is 39.5, then plus delta 1. Our delta 1 is 2, then divide by 2 plus delta 2, which is 2 plus 4, multiply by 10. In putting this in our calculator, we have the mode to be 42.83. And you can see now that from here we can inspect the type of skewness we are going to have since the mean is less than the mode. Definitely we are going to have negative skewness or left skewness. So we are done calculating the mode. We then go ahead to calculate the standard deviation. We have the formula here, so we are going to create only one column to accommodate f into x minus x bar squared. We are going to be taking away the mean from x, square it, we then multiply our result by f. So we start from the first value of x which is 14.5 minus 40, squaring it and multiplying the result by 4, we have 2601. We pick 24.5 minus 40. We square the difference. Multiplying by 7, we have 1681.75. We then pick 34.5 minus 40. Square the difference. Multiply by 8, we have 242. Pick 44.5 minus 40 square the difference multiply by 10 we have 202.5 we pick 54.5 minus 40 square the difference multiply by 6 we have 1231.5 we pick 64.5 minus 40 square the difference Multiply by 5, we have 3001.25. We then go ahead to sum them up. If you input all of these in our calculator, summing it up, we have 8990. We then go ahead to substitute into the standard deviation formula. That's going to give us square root of 8990. Divide by n minus 1, our n is 40. 40 minus 1 gives 39. In putting this in our calculator, we have the standard deviation to be 15.18. We then go ahead to substitute into the formula for calculating Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness. Our mean is 40, so we have 40 minus our mode which is 42.83, then divide by our standard deviation, which is 15.18. If you impute this in our calculator, we have negative 0.1864, which represents the skewness, that is the Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness of the distribution in the table. And we said this is negatively skewed distribution. And that's the end of solution to this problem and this is where we are ending this tutorial thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please like and share this video also remember to subscribe to our youtube channel check the description section of this video on our youtube channel to get the link to other videos on statistics until we come your way again goodbye